The Crypt Keeper Triumph can be acquired by finding the two hidden chests in the Deepstone Crypt. The first one is found at the end of the Pike encounter. After getting to the end, face the airlock. To the right of the airlock exit, there will be a large rock. Follow the rock around to the right and you will see a path in which you can make two jumps to climb on top of the large rock while circling around like a staircase. Opening the chest at the top will complete half of the triumph, giving you one of the mods, either Arc, Solar, or Void, that can be put on any of the raid armor, as well as either a piece of armor or weapon that you have already acquired from the raid. Have you not acquired any at this point, you will not receive additional loot with a different roll. You will also receive the new raid currency, Spoils of Conquest. You will get 10 for the hidden chest inside the Deepstone Crypt. Completing hidden chests in previous raids, like the Garden of Salvation or the Last Wish, do not offer any bonus spoils. You can also get these from doing the previous raids, but while the Deepstone Crypt will offer you 5 Spoils of Conquest, Per encounter, old raids will only offer you three. Once you've acquired the first chest, go into the airlock at the end of the pike encounter and continue forward through the caves until you come out of the other end and you'll see a lamp on the left hand side. There's two ways to get out of the map at this point. One is to climb on top of the lamp on the left, then jump onto the ledge that you'll be facing closest. And from there, you can jump onto the back. If you are a Titan or Hunter, it may be easier to do it on the opposite side of the canyon, hopping onto the lower ledge, then the high ledge, then jumping across the path below. Either way will get you facing towards the back where you'll see an ice bridge. The bridge prevents you from going straight off the back, but if you go at the angled nook as a hunter or titan, it'll easily let you jump in between those two uh, ridges, and you can just walk to the left, basically turning at a 45 degree angle between the perpendicular path you jumped from and the ice ridge across the back and walk to the left until the wall pushes you off. At that point, you'll fall to the bottom and the back. As a warlock, you can alternately run the top tree solar and do the Icarus dash to pull yourself onto the top. Either way, you will need to walk off the back left corner of it as trying to walk off the back will just force you off the front. Once on the bottom, you're going to continue to follow the left wall if you end up falling below, you may have a ceiling above you, just try jumping backwards and get on top. Once you get to the edge of the canyon, there's three separate techniques depending on if you are a Titan, Warlock, or Hunter. As a Titan, you can sword fly by putting on line ramparts and burst jump. You will jump, cancel, swing your sword. Uh, alternately as a Titan, you can pop middle tree arc Superman and fly yourself to the ledge on the far side. As a Warlock, you can charge your grenade until it becomes heat rises, giving you a slow falling perk in which you can jump 
and using Icarus Dash, work your way to the end. You can also uh, jump and then cancel your jump, swinging the sword to get a little extra distance out of your jump. Alternately, you can pop your top Dawn Blade Super, and swinging the slash will pull you farther forward, and the Icarus Dash distance is at least doubled. As a hunter, you will have the hardest time trying to get across, and will need to use Bottom Tree Void, which gives you the multi-tether, and a sword. And I recommend triple jump, but you can actually use either jump you prefer. After you've reached the end, you're going to follow around to the Braytech buildings and jump on the lowest one. You will see as you watch the map, there is one that forces, there's a invisible wall that'll force you slightly left. Don't be alarmed. At this point, put the path that you were just walking the direction of parallel to your right and walk all the way to the end. You'll see little platforms that you can get to using the hunter jump while swinging for distance, the titan sword flying with the burst jump, or the Icarus dash of the warlock should make it easy enough to work your way around these corners. From there, you're going to go all the way down the pipe that you see on the right hand side until you hit the clarity control area. From there, you will climb back up the pipe until you get to the very top and this will allow you to jump on the building's exterior and work your way around. As a hunter, double jumps that are timed well with a sword swing can pull you up. Same thing with a titan with a burst jump, uh, jumping once to go up, canceling, and then doing a second one for forward momentum. And the warlock is probably the hardest as ceilings above will force you straight back down, so you will need to kind of either jump cancel or do your Icarus dash and jump. Whenever you get the mantle mechanic, it does reset your jumps and you get all of them back, whether you are a hunter with a triple jump or a titan uh, with lion ramparts. At the top, you're going to work around to the other side. Again, if you fall down, it's not a big deal. Just cross where you are and climb back up and follow across. Uh, I'll let the visualizations here take you the rest of the way.
the last place worth noting is here at the very end when you're inside the building. You basically want to put yourself over the catwalk and you're going to slowly back up until you see a beam that you can jump over. Once jumping over the beam, you want to face backwards the direction you just came from and basically moonwalk slowly backwards towards the ledge and by being outside of the wall over the catwalk, when you walk backwards, you will fall through a hole in the floor that you can't see that will allow you to land immediately on the catwalk. From there, you just move forward until you get to the final chest and the completion of the triumph. Guardian down. 